Good morning again, everybody. I'd like to talk a little bit today about a mountaintop experience. Maybe you've had such a experience in your life. There's going up on the mountains. There's enough mountains around here we like to go up on sometimes, and it's refreshing, and it's very scenic, and a lot of times inspirational. Mountains across history and all parts of the world have been places where people would go a lot of times, get close to nature and close to God and become more spiritually attuned. Now, the mountaintop experience that I want to talk to you about was one that Jesus and three of his disciples had long ago. It had not been long after the teachings that Jesus had put forth, his Sermon on the Plain. And so in chapter 9, verses 28 through 36, let's reflect for a bit of time on another mountaintop experience that Jesus sort of engineered, Jesus and God, and the disciples benefited from it, so it was a lesson in itself. In verse 9, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus' sayings on his Sermon on the Plain, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. Why these three? Certainly these three are very significant disciples of Jesus. All of them were significant disciples, but Peter and John and James, very important members of his inner circle. In verse 29, And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes changed became dazzling white. That in itself kind of speaks of some supernatural thing that was happening. But what I want you to do is always, instead of looking at the literal meaning or trying to interpret that, look deep within. It has a deeper meaning. Any of us, if we become more spiritual, in a short time, it's because of God being with us, within us, in our inner sanctuary. And a lot of times these spiritual experiences that we have in our own mountaintop experiences can cause our whole face to light up, our whole demeanor if we become filled with God and filled with God's light, then our whole personality can change. Now in verse 30, suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. Well, Moses and Elijah, by the time of Jesus, had been dead a long, long time. So the writer here is saying He's bringing these two figures in, especially Moses. Moses himself had a mountaintop experience, if you read. He, he went up on a mountain, and he came back down after talking with God, and he was so lit up in his face that he had to wear a veil. But Jesus is not wearing a veil. This is important. And Jesus is different. For a long, long time, the, the Jews of Jesus' time, the only teachings they had were the teachings of Moses and the teachings of Elijah. But now they have something different. And so we have these two figures from the past. And, and it's time to mark what's happening, what God is doing with Jesus 
it's time to mark a difference and, and mark the beginning of something else. They saw these two men talking to him. And in verse 31, they appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. So Moses and Elijah appearing in glory and talking about what is going to happen with Jesus in his going to Jerusalem and being executed on the cross. This is about to happen. Now, verse 32, Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. So how awesome that <coughs> Peter and, and the other two, they were kind of taking a nap here on the mountaintop. That'll happen sometimes, won't it? Don't sleep too long. You might miss something. If you stay awake and you go within yourself in prayer, something magnificent might happen. And just as they were leaving him, this is verse 33, <coughs> Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said, apparently they had saw these images of Moses and Elijah, took them to be for real, down to earth for real, not in any way a image for them. And they wanted to put them something up to, to rest under. Uh, kind of like a brush arbor. Three dwellings for them. Well, Moses and Elijah had dwelled in the consciousness of Israel for a long, long time. But they'd been dead a long, long time. And Jesus really didn't need any kind of dwelling. But anyway, Peter just kind of got one to get busy and make a dwelling. Kind of like us sometimes, we're more concerned with making dwellings. We're more concerned with building churches or adding to churches than we are looking at the dwelling of ourselves the eternal dwelling within ourselves, the temple that's within ourselves. That's the only shelter we really need. In verse 34, while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Verse 35, then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. God was putting a cross to Jesus, to them and anybody else in the area, from within this cloud of unknowing, that it's time to listen to Jesus. It's okay to have Moses and Elijah and all the other prophets of the past, but listen to Jesus. If we're in prayer, we certainly praying to God and it's when we should really be listening to Jesus, listening to the teachings of Jesus, which is what Jesus was all about, was in teaching us, revealing to us what the kingdom really was and who God really 
is. So if we have a mountaintop experience and really have a such a spiritual enlightenment, we're going, going to want to keep going back to the teachings of Jesus and how he teaches us now through the Holy Spirit. That's, that is a wonderful prayer when we just sit for a while and listen. Listen to Jesus through the scriptures and through the teachings of the Holy Spirit. In verse 36, when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. Would anybody have believed them? Most people would not have believed them if they repeated what they saw with the enlightened face of Jesus, and they would not have said what they heard out of the cloud saying this is my son so how could they keep silent well sometimes people are not ready to hear about these things but the most that we can do is to seek God in a cloud sometimes that's within us that stops us from seeing God, stops us from seeing Jesus. Jesus did not put a veil on his face. He continued to do what he was called to do. And certainly when we receive the light of God, we don't need to cover ourselves. Let that light shine in our friendly face, in our smiling face. Let that light shine from God through us and out of us so others can know that we've had an, a spiritual experience and that they can also have a spiritual experience. So where was, you know, God, Jesus taught God was spirit. and that the kingdom was within. So where was God on this day? He was within Jesus, and Jesus was within God. And we ourselves are, according to the teachings of Jesus, are one with him and one with God. And it's not something that we should try to hide and, and to be afraid of. There's an old song I remember, we sing it sometimes, that this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. The light of God, the love of God, flows from God within us in our inner sanctuary and then flows from us into the world. So when we are seen in that way, don't show an angry face. Don't show a face of fear. Show a face of love and compassion and concern. And we can help light up the world to the truth of God by letting that light shine from us. You don't have to go up on a mountain. You don't have to go up on Chihal Mountain or go up into the mountains of the Smokies or the up into the, Mount, the, the Rocky Mountains or even the Himalayas to have a mountaintop experience. The mountain is a metaphor here of that place within us where we can rise up 
and be close to God. So blessings to you in your mountaintop experiences.